There are three demands of silver that will drive silver to untold heights over the next decade. These demands will rise dramatically just as it becomes apparent the supply of silver becomes scarce. The confluence of these two forces will destroy the quadrillion dollar empire of lies and the current debt war paradigm. I will show that these three demands occur at various stages and the final stage is being set for the most dramatic rise in price we have ever seen. The first demand is industrial demand. First and foremost, silver is being used as an industrial metal. Silver is the indispensable metal. Next to oil, silver is the most widely used commodity ever, as it has over 10,000 uses. As technology progresses and expands, silver's usefulness will explode even further. Its unique characteristics are unlike any other commodity in the world. It is the most reflective of all metals, the greatest conductor of both heat and electricity, strongly resists corrosion and oxidation, second most malleable and ductile metal next to gold, and it has recently been discovered to be a very effective antimicrobial and bacterial metal, and is now even being used in the war against cancer. Silver is generally used in small quantities, and its unique characteristics make it irreplaceable. This makes its price inelastic. All commodities have a self-correcting price mechanism except for silver. If a commodity's price rises too high, demand drops off as people seek substitutes or supply rises to meet demand, thus lowering the price. This mechanism does not exist with silver. Silver is typically used in very small quantities in high-tech components, and there is no substitute for it, so manufacturers and customers will absorb any price increase silver provides. The industrial demand has been the primary demand of silver over the past decades. Silver users try to keep the real physical price of silver low, when coupled with the drawdown of billions of ounces of silver stockpiles over the years, this has been relatively an easy task. The industrial demand of silver is physical, but we will see that the industrial participants want to keep the silver price low so as to make more money on their value-added goods. This demand is growing and inelastic to price, which provides a very strong base for the next demand to put some more fuel on the fire. The next demand is the growing investment demand. This demand has almost been dead for the past generation of investors. This demand has a Jekyll and Hyde component to it. It has a paper trader component to it that simply wants a horse to bet on. These investors are primarily Anglo-American institutional investors and tend to want the silver price lower. But what they really want is to get big swings in the market. They trade anywhere from 40 to 1,000 paper ounces of silver for every real physical ounce in the market. And they only usually take about 3% of the real physical off the market when it is traded. This institutional demand is still in its early stages and seems content in the paper chase of the trader market. This institutional demand is set to grow not only in acceptance, but in worldwide audience and finally in physical metal. Institutions seem to follow the leader, and when it becomes apparent that silver is up 20% a year while the stock market is flat, it won't take long for these sharks to smell blood in the water, and they'll want more exposure to silver and other commodities. At first, they'll play the paper market, but soon they will want the real thing. Foreign institutional investment demand is quite different than our institutional investment demand. They don't seem interested in playing the paper chase, and they want real physical silver. They seem intent on dumping dollars for real assets. The opening of the Hong Kong Mercantile Exchange is a good example of this. During the last bull run of silver in the 80s, only Western nations participated in that market. Since then, there is 10 to 20 times more capital in the world. There are 50% more people living in the world today, and now all of the world can participate in this silver bull run. China, India, and Russia are leading the charge to buy more and more precious metals. There are a lot of potentially useless dollars floating around the world and they want real tangible assets in return. This type of foreign institutional investment demand wants higher prices and has the potential for backing the final demand which will catapult silver into the stratosphere. The final investment demand is private investors. These investors typically want physical and only dabble in the paper trader market. These investors buy and hold and they differentiate themselves from the other demands that specifically want a higher price for their investment. They plan on dumping their toxic paper assets and getting real physical assets outside of the paper chase. These investors are like ants, constantly taking food off the table and storing it for a rainy day. This demand is joining the industrial demand and taking real physical metal off of the market. But unlike the industrial users, the investment demand of private investors strictly want higher prices. The final and completely absent demand in this world is monetary demand. Silver has absolutely no monetary demand in the world. It is used in things and invested for protection against inflation, but nowhere in the world can you just buy things with it.
I believe that with the mathematically inevitable collapse of the worldwide currencies, this new monetary demand will push silver through the sky. Some countries or local communities will monetize silver, and as history has shown, money goes to where it's most appreciated. All of humanity will be crying out for real money as they try to recover from the fiat something-for-nothing dream. This third and final demand, of monetary demand, is insatiable, as no one can ever have too much money. We have seen that industrial demand has been the driving force behind the silver market for decades. This demand wants cheap silver so as to make more money on their finished goods. This combination of cheap prices and more uses has pushed silver inventories to the brink, which attracts the next demand. Institutional investment is just now starting to catch up with a decade of silver outperforming almost every paper market. The dominant Anglo-American investment demand has primarily wanted lower silver prices as to not take away too much power from their paper money illusion, but they really want a paper asset to bet on. The final two investment demands are just now starting to take over the market. They want higher silver prices and primarily want physical silver. These investors are surrounding the elite and will eventually take control of the entire silver market. Finally, we have the monetary demand that only wants physical and only wants higher purchasing power. The foreign institutional investors and the individual investors will be more than happy to take their physical silver and spend it wherever monetary demand is most appreciated. This will not happen until after the mathematically inevitable collapse of the world's fiat currencies. Until then, it has been a great investment and based off of what we've seen here, the final monetary demand will push silver much, much higher.